good evening to all of you. My presentation is about a recent project that we did in the northwestern province of Sri Lanka. This project was funded by the EU and we led this project with the four other partners. So this project was particularly about wastewater reusing irrigation and agriculture. So wastewater reusing irrigation and agriculture comes under in theme three, which is on water quality, health, and environment. So many cities in Sri Lanka, like many other developing countries, are not connected to sewage systems. So most of these wastewater flows into surface waters. Even in the Kalampu, like Kalampu is the only city in Sri Lanka with a sewage system, but even with that sewage system, the wastewater finally end up untreated in the ocean. So this can lead to many negative effects, especially to sectors agriculture, tourism, fisheries, and health. So generally, Wastewater treatment is expensive, so most of the developing countries cannot afford to have wastewater treatment systems to the high end treatment. Therefore, using marginal quality water in agriculture is an increasing reality. So whether we like it or not, this practice is there. So globally, over 200 million farmers use raw, treated, or diluted wastewater. On the other hand, wastewater reuse is also an important aspect because the better it contributes to better wastewater management and also to solve water scarcity problem. So if you look into the wastewater situation in the city of Kurunagala, this is in the northwestern province. Kurunagala is a developing commercial city in Sri Lanka and uh, they don't have many industrial areas but they have about 3,000 small units and also commercial and other industrial establishments in the city. And uh, mainly the wastewater generator is of domestic origin, that is mainly toilet waste or sewage. And dumping of solid waste into water was identified as a major problem. So all the sources of wastewater we have identified are listed here. This situation you even see in the city of Colombo. And this again, the wastewater situation in Kurunagala in pictures. So this picture, which is uh, shown here, it shows the level of contamination Maybe you can see from the picture that solid waste is floating, it's totally black. And this is a silted stormwater drain. And this again is a situation where wastewater being discharged into a road drain system. And this is a situation where oil and waste is discharged into water, so it's totally black. And you can see, actually, at the location, you can see oil and waste floating on top. So this is the project area that we have been working. So what happens to all the wastewater generated in the city of Kuvanagala? So all the wastewater generated in the city finally end up in an agricultural area. So all the wastewater generated in the city area are discharged mainly into two canals. That is namely Varnella and Buella shown here. And these are traditional irrigation canals, bringing water from traditional <coughs> irrigation tanks. And with the development of the city, all the uh, establishments, including even the hospital that I have marked here, discharge wastewater into these irrigation canals. So what now flows in these canals are in the mixture of irrigation water, wastewater, and storm water. And then we, these two canals meet just outside the city, which is a given as uh, location six here, number six here. And there is agricultural water storage known as weir water anchor. It's a weir system. And through this weir system, an irrigation canal takes the water to pantries. And we have tested water quality. So 1 to 10 are mainly water quality monitoring locations that we monitor the water quality throughout the project. And we found that the water quality does not comply with the WHO guidelines for wastewater reuse in agriculture. Sri Lanka do not have any national guidelines for wastewater reuse in agriculture. So we have uh, made an attempt to improve the water quality, working with a number of stakeholders in Kurunagala. So this is mainly the government institutions, Department of Irrigation, and also private sectors, and uh, all NGOs, and even the local community. So we had several interventions to improve the water quality in the area. So the extent of wastewater irrigation in this uh, particular project site is 53 hectares of paddy. And the wastewater supplements irrigation water in the dry season. So mainly, the dry season water requirement is met by the irrigation water and the wastewater. So this 
represents both an opportunity because of the recycled nutrients available in the wastewater, and also there is a risk because of various pollutants in wastewater. So as I mentioned earlier, Sri Lanka does not have any guidelines for this type of water reuse, but this situation is there. Even in Colombo, sometimes in the vegetable markets, you get leafy vegetables grown with wastewater. Sometimes we may be eating those, so it's of a concern for all of us. So a combination of minimal urban sewage treatments using low-cost methodologies and wastewater application guidelines could result in a win-win situation. Both the farmers will benefit and also the wastewater managers and the general public will benefit. Therefore, considering finally, considering the present situation of deteriorating water quality, Sri Lanka could be a good place to develop such technology based on a new